See? You can beat this level without killing Yoshi. You murderers. What's going on guys? I'm Jeff, the Yoshi fanatic. And if the name didn't give it away, I really like Yoshi. In fact, I've liked Yoshi ever since his first appearance in video games, Super Mario World. I mean, what's not to like? He can run and jump just as well as Mario can, he can eat enemies and defeat enemies Mario can't, he can breathe fire, and he's super cute! After seeing him for the first time, Yoshi quickly became my favorite character in video games, and I would always play as him in any game he was playable, like Mario Kart, Mario Party, the Mario Sports games, and, of course, Super Smash Bros. Of course, Yoshi has his own series of games, so that begs the question. What do I think of those games? Which one is my favorite? Well, let's find out. This is my top 10 Yoshi games. Released on the Nintendo DS in early 2005, Yoshi Touch & Go makes heavy use of the system's touchscreen in a very non-conventional Yoshi game style. It's got four modes, which are all score-based auto-runner-style minigames in which you control Yoshi and... Clouds? To try to protect Baby Mario on your way to the goal. It's fun enough, and it's definitely got some charm in its visual style and soundtrack, but in a way, it feels like a precursor to modern mobile games. The gameplay is pretty shallow, and won't keep you invested for very long, placing it at number 10 on this list. Side note, this game's Japanese name is Kachi, Tachi, Yoshi, which makes me wonder if I should give the game extra points, or take off a few more, so I guess there's that. Alright, this game's a bit of a doozy, and definitely the weirdest game on this list. Yoshi Safari is an on-rail first-person shooter where you ride on Yoshi's back and shoot various Mario enemies with a bazooka. What? A cursory glance at the gameplay will clue you into the fact that this game was designed with the intention of showing off the Super Scope, and honestly, it does a pretty good job of that. It's another score-chasing game that has you running through seven levels and gunning down as many enemies as you can, with a boss fight at the end of each stage. It's a little too short and a little too easy, only taking about an hour or two to beat, but it's got decent enemy variety, and it's pretty fun to blast through. The visual style is okay, but nothing special. It's definitely designed mostly to showcase the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 graphics. The game is also oddly violent at some points. I mean, you break both of Bowser's arms in the final boss fight. I actually feel kind of bad for him. Not only that, but Mario even shoots at Yoshi in the results screen. Look at Yoshi's terrified expression! Mario, you absolute madman! How could you?! Back in the late 80s and early 90s, there were several puzzle games released that tried to capitalize on the Tetris craze, and the Yoshi series was no exception. In fact, there were three Yoshi puzzle games released around this time. Each of them put their own twist on the falling block puzzle game formula, but there was one in particular that stood out to me. Yep, the only one that doesn't even have the word Yoshi in the title. Out of all of the Yoshi puzzle games, Tetris Attack is the one that has the most charm, especially with its animated Yoshi-themed backgrounds and soundtrack, all of which had me smiling from ear to ear the whole time I played it. Not only that, but the gameplay is simple, yet addicting and a ton of fun. I played all of the Yoshi puzzle games, and this was the only one I wanted to keep playing after the first 30 minutes. In fact, I kinda wanna play more of it now. At number 7, we have the first game on this list that has the traditional Yoshi gameplay. Eh, kinda. Yoshi Topsy Turvy, or Yoshi's Universal Gravitation outside of the US, features an interesting gimmick that involves the use of a gyroscope built into the game cartridge to manipulate the gravity of Yoshi's world to overcome platforming challenges. Sounds pretty cool, right? Well, sort of. That part's cool, but the rest of the game falls flat on its face. The controls are very stiff, and Yoshi's moveset is quite limited. He can't use his famous ground pound or egg toss, and his flutter jump is so badly nerfed that you may as well not even use it. Yoshi can still eat enemies, but it only makes him pass gas. Despite all of that, the gameplay gimmick is quite novel and unique, and there certainly is fun to be had here. And hey, it has pretty awesome continue music, so there's that. To be honest, this game is the most disappointing one on the list, because it had so much potential, and ultimately failed to deliver. Yoshi's New Island attempted to return to the classic Yoshi's Island formula that we all know and love, but ran into a few hurdles. 
The controls for this game have a weird momentum to them, making the whole experience feel a bit slippery. The egg throwing is especially bad with this, as it includes a wind-up time, unless you're moving, oddly enough. I'm a little torn on the art style. On one hand, they tried something unique, and it's definitely got its own identity. On the other hand, though, it's a little odd. They seem to be going for a combination of clay-looking character models with a watercolor overlay, and the backgrounds have a more traditional Yoshi's Island style. It's a combination that doesn't really work for me. The gameplay is actually pretty solid, as it returns to the more traditional Yoshi's Island style. You can't really go wrong there. It's also the first Yoshi game that remembers your collectibles after you complete a stage, which is a nice addition for sure. Of course, the worst part of this game is easily the music. Some of the tracks are pretty good, and overall I like the main theme that plays in the levels themselves, but there are some tracks that are straight up unbearable. Who thought using kazoos as the main instrument was a good idea? Overall, not a terrible game, but it could have been something truly great. Oh, what could have been. At number 5 is the first Yoshi game I ever played, and as such, it's hard for me to fight my nostalgia and be objective, but I'll try my best. Yoshi's Story is a game that Nintendo went in a bit of an odd direction with. It's got a unique feel to the controls, which largely emphasize Oh. oh my goodness. It's got a unique feel to the controls, which largely emphasized the use of the analog stick for both normal movement and egg throwing controls. Overall, I think it works, but it does feel a little slippery. The visuals have an odd yet charming style to them, opting to use mostly 2D assets instead of 3D models. Because of that, visually it's one of the best aging Nintendo 64 games. You don't hear people complain about this game's low polygon counts. <coughs> Super Smash Bros. <coughs> The levels also have an odd feel to them, opting out of using a traditional goal-based system in favor of a looping level design. Instead of reaching a goal, you keep playing the level until you've eaten 30 fruits. This definitely messes with the game's difficulty curve, and given the vast amount of fruits everywhere, any semblance of challenge is entirely self-imposed. Overall, it's just a really odd Yoshi game, but in a way, I'm glad that it didn't just try to be Yoshi's Island again. It has its own identity, which makes it stick out in my mind. <laughs> After 11 years of multiple spin-offs and weird Yoshi games, I'm looking at you topsy-turvy, Yoshi's Island DS is a return to the Yoshi's Island formula. It goes back to the traditional playstyle, level system, and even art style. Where this game differs from the original gameplay is in the use of multiple babies in addition to Baby Mario, including Peach, Donkey Kong, Wario, and even Bowser for a time. Each of the new babies has their own unique attributes, allowing for more variety in the levels and gameplay. The system actually works pretty well, although it doesn't feel like it reaches its full potential. There are less levels in this game than the original Yoshi's Island, but they're also quite a bit longer. Some stages can take upwards of 15 minutes, maybe more for the later levels. This can be an issue if you want to find all of the collectibles. While the soundtrack is pretty pleasant, it doesn't measure up to the original, and the overall audio design is a mixed bag. There are some sound effects that don't feel quite right, and some that feel like straight-up stock sound effects. I also didn't enjoy the fact that the gameplay is spread across both of the DS's screens. Collectibles, enemies, and platforms can get hidden in the gap between the screens, and managing both screens at the same time can be cumbersome. However, Yoshi's Island DS was a refreshing game to come back to, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Up next is the newest entry in the Yoshi series, Yoshi's Crafted World. And honestly, I really liked this one, but it's nowhere near perfect. It's a game with very high highs and very low lows. Personally, I'm getting tired of the arts and crafts visual style in general, but even I can admit that this looks fantastic. Everything is so clean and polished, and Yoshi himself is possibly the cutest he's ever been in the series. Not only that, but the visual style is very well incorporated into the gameplay too. This game feels really good to control, there are some nice additions, like being able to cancel out of a ground pound and... Crawling?! Never mind, I take it all back, this game is perfect, 10 out of 10, I love it. My favorite addition, though, is the ability to jump off of an egg ricocheted off of a wall or the ground. This adds a lot of platforming possibilities, which is a nice touch. However, there were some omissions that I wasn't fond of. 
For example, you no longer flutter jump higher when you jump off of an enemy, and you can't hold an enemy in Yoshi's mouth without turning it into an egg. These may seem like small things, but they make a big difference. One of the elements Yoshi's Crafted World brings to the table is introducing a 3D element to the gameplay, and it's pretty well integrated. It makes you stay aware of things in both the foreground and the background. However, throwing an egg in 3D is pretty clunky, and definitely hampered my experience with this new gimmick. The music is a mixed bag as well. I actually liked the main theme, but some of the music is just not very good. Overall, this game is very fun to play through casually, even given the low difficulty, but it's an absolute chore to 100% complete, and I think some of the mechanics could have used a little work. Still, I definitely recommend this one. Taking the runner-up spot on this list is Yoshi's Woolly World, and for good reason. It's a fantastic game that I have very few complaints about. The graphic style, while not entirely up my alley these days, is pleasantly clean and polished, and the yarn art style plays into the gameplay very well. The sound design is fantastic, and some of the soundtracks are among my favorite music in any video game. The controls are basically perfect, the levels aren't too long, and the collectibles are a joy to collect. The completion aspect of this game is the most fleshed out that it's ever been in the series. Every collectible type has a purpose. Well, at least before Meavers bit the dust. Rest in peace, Meavers. My favorite addition to the collectibles is the yarn bundles, which grant a new Yoshi costume for each stage. That's 66 unlockable costumes! The only real complaints I have about this game are that some of the Yoshi costumes lose creativity towards the end of the game, and at times, especially in the case of the bosses, Yoshi's Woolly World feels derivative of Yoshi's Island. But honestly, those are small nitpicks. And overall, this game is just fantastic. Alright, I'm sure this comes as a surprise to nobody, but Yoshi's Island still holds the crown after over two decades of Yoshi games, and it takes the top spot on this list. Even though the title of the game would have you believe that this is just a sequel to Super Mario World, in all actuality, it's anything but. It's a vastly different experience, and one that puts a new and refreshing take on the platformer genre, putting more of an emphasis on exploration rather than a straightforward dash to the end of the level. The art style is gorgeous, and honestly hasn't aged a day. The controls are perfect, and reward skilled gameplay without being a hurdle for newer players. The entire soundtrack is amazing, and I often find myself humming the songs and getting them stuck in my head. The levels are well designed and never overstay their welcome, and the collectibles are a joy to seek out. Honestly, the only bad thing I have to say about the game is that the levels have a bad habit of not letting you go backwards through the stage to find collectibles you may have missed, but that is a very minor nitpick. This is as close to being a perfect game as any of the Yoshi games has ever come, and it stands tall as being not only my favorite Yoshi game, but one of my favorite games of all time. So there you have it, that's my top 10 Yoshi games. But what do you guys think? What's your favorite Yoshi game? Did your favorite one make the list? Or maybe there is a game on this list that you didn't even know about. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go play some Tetris Attack. What? I did say I wanted to play more of it, didn't I? Hey guys, thanks for watching. I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. I also livestream every weekend, and I love chatting with the fans. I always post updates in my Discord server about my stream schedule, so be sure to join my Discord if you'd like to tune in. So thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.